The dawn of this mega season is finally upon us as we disembark at Yas Marina Circuit. Welcome back to the Grid Talk podcast. This is episode 247 where we will preview the final race of the season in Abu Dhabi. I'm your host Tom Horrocks and today I'm joined by fellow Grid Talk host Owe Medford. Hello. And Louis Edwards. Hello there. And if you enjoyed this podcast, we would love it if you could leave us a five-star rating on Spotify and a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. We'll shout out everyone who leaves a comment on our next show. And if you leave us a review, you will automatically be entered into our monthly prize draw to win some fabulous Grid Talk themed merchandise. And if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to us on YouTube and click the bell to be notified when we go live. We're nearing 800 subscribers now and we have loads of video content, including articles and shorts for you to go and listen to as well. Give us a thumbs up, share and comment as we love hearing from you. And any questions that you ask during our live stream, we will attempt to answer in our in our post show. So uh, get onto the YouTube and start commenting. So we'll, uh, without further ado, let's jump straight into the preview then, Owe. And I'll, I'll give you the uh, the world champions Red Bull and, and uh, all is not harmonious in Red Bull. Do you think coming into this weekend that we're going to see any kind of fireworks or is, is it going to be business as usual trying to push forward for that second place for Checo? Um, I, I mean, for, for uh, sorry, Red. I was about to say Ferrari. Then, um, no, Red Bull's a a, a big enough outfit that they, then they shouldn't have too many issues. They only have one job now, um, which is focused on Sergio Perez. That said, um, one thing that you know is commonly reported when you have issues like this is that uh, issues like they've had, um, literally just at Brazil, is that um, it splits the team um, potentially. You know, there's, there, there's there could be internal friction, um, and they don't really have. I don't know the three weeks that you'd want between between races anymore um, to to kind of get the team back together as one. Um, luckily, that's not going to probably uh, affect them too much. Um, but it it could just be that extra little niggle in the back of everyone's mind, um, and that and that's the sort of thing that changes uh, how people behave. So it's it uh, you know I, I think it's it, it's going to probably be fine for them but there is that the sort of like trouble in paradise um and if we and if you know i, I don't want to get too much maybe in the psychology of sport but that those are the sorts of things that could you know can could just upset a driver one way or the other and uh and could affect sergio perez's performance trying to get that second in the championship yeah, if there's any niggling doubts, obviously they 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 may well show they may well rear their ugly heads if uh, if there's ever if there's a situation in the race where where Max is is ahead of Checo, then uh, then that that's certainly gonna gonna lead to some doubts in his mind then. And uh, but um, moving on to Ferrari then, Louis, there's um, Ferrari have never actually won at Abu Dhabi, uh, which was something that I was surprised to see. They've got eight podiums, but they've never stood on the top step. Do you think this week they've got a chance of doing that? Uh, unfortunately not. I think Ferrari of late, uh, I think they've kind of abandoned this, this year's car and they're just, they're focusing on, you know, next year. And I think that's why we've seen Mercedes come at them so hard, uh, you know, this last, you know, five or six races because they just, uh, Mercedes have continued, you know, trying to get as much out of this car as possible to, to hopefully set them up well for next year. And Ferrari, I think, have already you know, since the constructors and the, the drivers' championship went out the window long ago, they've they've kind of abandoned this year. Um, I think they definitely have the pace to get on the podium, but uh, unfortunately, I think for them, their only real goal is going to keep um, Leclerc ahead of Perez, and I think that's going to be quite a difficult job this weekend. Yeah, it's a sad state of affairs, really, just how quick Ferrari have been all year. And we're going into a race weekend and we're, we're not really expecting them to even be in the fight, which is uh, which is it's a bit of a fall from grace, really, for Ferrari. But um, but no no fall from grace has been larger than Mercedes, Owen. And, and going into this weekend, unbelievably, they have an outside chance of passing Ferrari. Uh, another one-two will see them pass the, uh, the Scuderia this weekend. Um, are they going to do it or is it just one bridge too far? Um, I think strategically, it would be a terrible idea to finish ahead of Ferrari. I mean, I, th- I think the fact that we're even talking about this actually illustrates Ferrari's implosion. Um, over, 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 I mean, we've been talking about it for months now. It's not even, it was not even a surprise. It's probably, to be honest, people are probably sad of me talking about it, but I can't. But this is the, probably the worst Ferrari season of, I've seen in my life. This is all. This is worse than two thousand and nine. You know. The, they had they have had the car and they've completely blown it away to the point where we're now talking about a Mercedes that has really got its act together and you know 
<laughs> coming off the back of a just the kind of weekend that we were that we'd become accustomed to seeing from Mercedes. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's definitely within the realms of possibility that Mercedes could overtake Ferrari. Like, but like I say, I don't think it's tactically the right decision from a from from a financial regula- financial or sporting regulations standpoint. I think they they serve to gain better. Um, oh, so they stand to gain more if if they do finish behind Ferrari and, and just you know take that that little extra amount of allowance of, of aerodynamic um, and wind tunnel testing and, and the uh, increased cost cap that they cost cap uh, limit that they get, I think from that. So I, I think there's, there's, a, there's benefits to not overtaking Ferrari, um, but that might be a bit, I think that's, it's almost kind of, it, it, they, they'd have to start hampering their own performance. <laughs> I think to stop, to not overtake Ferrari at this point. It's just a crazy, crazy situation. And I, I personally, I think that Mercedes professional pride and, and just sheer competition that they're not going to, I don't think they're going to, you know, throw the sandbags in the, uh, in the airbox or anything like that to, to slow them down. It's uh, that's, I mean, if, if that becomes a possibility where it's something that people genuinely consider, it's kind of something is fundamentally wrong with the sport. If that is the case. And, uh, and they, they were certainly, um, they, they asked Otmar Schaffnauer on the, on the pit wall this weekend, you know, what, what would be better finishing ahead of McLaren or getting the extra wind tunnel time for next year. And he said, categorically the, uh, the championship position, because of uh, you know just commercially it just means so much more for the for the team than an extra few percent on the wind tunnel. So um, I, I can't see Mercedes panning it personally, but you never know. But moving on to Alpine, then Louis, it looks like they finally managed to break free of McLaren and um, and they've uh, they've stretched their legs a little bit and their uh, Ocon and and Fernando Alonso seem to be. Well, based on based on the race, they've uh, they were behaving in the race, um, even if they you know was behind gritted teeth. Um, how do you see Abu Dhabi going for them? And uh, and again, is that is is there any chance for McLaren? Yeah, as you said, it was it was definitely through gritted teeth. As Ocon even found out midway through the race, well, towards the end of the race, when they asked Alonso to go past, and he was like, "No, I want to fight Sebastian." And but. Um, Alpine took their opportunity last weekend. You know, when you have your biggest rivals uh, got a double DNF, you, you take that opportunity, and that's exactly what um, Alpine did, and they scored good points. And I think with how close it is in the mid the midfield, I don't see McLaren making up enough points, especially in breaking into that top six to then score enough points to overtake Alpine. I think it'll take a hell of a job, and it's. You know, it's made it been made more difficult with Ricardo's grid penalty and general performance this season. But for Fernando, this is his last race uh, for Alpine. Whether he really cares about where Alpine finished in the constructors is definitely questionable. I don't think he actually cares at all. I think he's only focused on one thing and one thing alone. That's where he finishes and where he ends up. And I think Ocon will just be glad that he will have someone he also doesn't like in the seat next year, but maybe it's grown to love a bit more compared to the way that Fernando's been behaving uh, this season. Um, but I think it is going to be a little too far out of reach for McLaren. I think Alpina will definitely secure that fourth place. Yeah, um, I'm through gritted teeth myself. I'm I'm very much uh, thinking that this the same thing. And uh, moving on to moving on to McLaren then, Owen. They uh, they've got a win here in the past with Lewis Hamilton back in was it 2009? Maybe I want to say was, the, was it the first race of here? I think maybe he won. But they they definitely got one win here. Um, that's kind of what they need this weekend if they're going to take any fight to to Alpine. And and with Daniel Ricciardo coming in with with a three place grid drop due to his clash with Kevin Magnussen as well. It's uh, it's an uphill struggle even before they start but they have scored more than 20 points on two occasions this season so it's not absolutely you know nailed on for LP and we know what their uh, what their reliability is like but uh, but what, what do you think am I being a bit over optimistic here for McLaren uh, uh, I'm sorry to say because there's nothing that I'd like to see more than McLaren coming back but I just I think it's too much um, I think the biggest thing is you, you've got to look at is that uh, I, yeah okay Lando Norris could probably do the goods on that one. Um, the person I don't think that could do that is uh, is Daniel Ricciardo. I, I, it's, it's been it's a sorry state of affairs for him, but he's got a, 
something like he's only contributed about 23 percent of the uh 24 percent of the of the points total this year and i think that's that says it all uh for daniel ricardo i just don't think it uh, unfortunately i i it, I, the 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 penalty says it all. It's I, it, it's it's been the Lando Norris show for a while. I think he needs to enjoy the the last time that he's going to be driving a fast car. Um, if, you know, it's uh, it, it's been a sorry state of affairs, and unfortunately, it does mean that I think McLaren don't have much to get out of this weekend. They just need to do it to fulfill the con, uh, fulfill their entry, and that's about it. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, mean, I was obviously my my allegiances are very well known, and that's kind of just 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 hoping, just trying to manifest something myself and manifest it into existence. But uh, but no, I, I think I think you're right. It's that I think that one's long gone now, and and Ricardo potentially his legacy in Formula One for me is is McLaren's most expensive mistake. Really, you know, it cost a lot of money to come into the team. He was supposed to be the team leader to take Lando Norris up to that next level. And he's effectively cost them fourth place this year. And, you know, you could argue that he cost them third place last year as well. If he was to be anywhere near Lando's level last year, then they potentially may have held on to third from Ferrari as well. So it's it's a huge, costly, costly mistake to, you know, to bring Ricardo in, it seems, which at the time of the signing, I was absolutely buoyed by by the signing. I, I was I thought, well, you know, Ferrari's loss is McLaren's game with, with Ricardo. He's he's the man to take us forward. But. But alas, no, and he's just just petering out his his Formula One career, and and going to be pretty much pretty much an also ran in the final race, it seems. But speaking of also rans of of past years, anyway, Alfa Romeo have, have had a bit more about them in the last couple of races. They went for a, a big spell there, Louis, where there was just no no points. It seems like they couldn't buy a point, and uh, and they've they've had a couple of points finishes now. They're five points clear of Aston Martin, who themselves are on a bit of an upward trajectory as well. And and it's between them for them and Aston Martin for sixth and seventh. How do you see this one going for Alfa Romeo then? Uh, for me, Alfa Romeo, it all depends on their their car's reliability. You know how many times we said this season, oh, Joe's retired or Bottas has retired. The last weekend, despite a really disappointing qualifying on the Friday, they made steady progress in the sprint and then made steady progress again in the race with Bottas scoring points. And I think that's just where Alfa and Mayer need to be. I think they need to be either on the cusp of Q2 or in Q2 and qualifying and then just during the race being, you know, slow but steady, trying not to, you know, hopefully their car doesn't go bang. Um, so they can just make it to the end of the race and that's their best ch- uh, chance because this battle with Aston Martin has been really close of recent just because Aston Martin have been on a great resurgence and we all know that that Aston Martin actually has really good race pace. It may not show it on a Saturday, but the race pace in that Aston Martin is quite good. And I think that's the only thing that Alfa Romeo need to be wary of. But the five points needed is given those teams is a, uh, bit of a stretch they're you know the teams that are always just on the fringe of you know ninth or tenth so I think they'll be happy with where they are and I think they'll be fairly comfortable with where they are but they definitely need to still be in or around the points just to solidify that place in the constructors yes it's been quite a while since since Aston Martin scored five points in a race and with you know, Alfa Romeo certainly seeming to be on a bit of a point scoring trend at the moment, even if it is bottom end points. Five points doesn't seem like a lot, but when you've only, when you've scored fifty all year, divide that between twenty races, that's that's kind of your average point score. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna it, it's gonna be tough. But um, but Aston Martin then, I mean, they as we said, they're just the five points behind. They're well clear of Haas now because they really have kicked on in the second half of the season and started picking up those those bottom end points and uh, and Stroll Vettel one more one more race together. Um, is there going to be any fireworks and not just the fireworks at the at the flag? Is there is there going to be anything happening in there? And and are you of a differing opinion to Louis? Do you think they've got a chance of that sixth place? I think I think it's just that little bit too far. It's just it's it's really it really is possible. Um, you know, it could it, things just do go their way. I mean, the, you know, let's remember that the the engines are going to be the, the engines are, uh, are going to be on their last knockings, and of course, the teams will try to work it out so that they don't have to take a a, a reliability sort of. Uh, sorry they don't you know they don't have an engine blow up but the ferrari is not particularly reliable um luckily it's you know at yas marina it's um 
in its you know, ideal operating window, basically, uh, down at sea level. But, you know, it, it just could be one of those things. Sometimes things go your way. Um, whether the drivers or not will um, will sort of play ball. I, I, I don't think we're going to see anything like the uh, the kind of, over, uh, sorry, the kind of um, defence by Lance Stroll. And even if it did, uh, luckily, you know, Abu Dhabi's so wide that there's no way that there were, anyone could hit anything. Um, you know, and there's definitely no grass to, to run onto. So, um you know, luckily we shouldn't see them t- come too uh, close together, and if they do, they, they won't. It won't shouldn't cause that much of an issue. Um, I think you, you'd be hoping against hope in some ways for for uh, for Aston Martin, and I think they can probably do it. Uh, they, they do it if they, sorry, they can do it if everything falls their way. Um, but it does require something to go wrong for them uh, with Alfa Romeo, and I, I don't think it's fully in their hands. Um, but like uh, like I say, it is possible, but the you know the 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 form book says probably not um they <laughs> they'll probably end up one point away which would be devastating but um it's probably not the worst thing in the world um given given the amount of money they've got yeah they'll probably end up on on the on the same points and missing out on count back but to uh, start of the season Aston Martin were not looking at potentially snatching sixth place in the dying embers of the season so whatever happens this year you know it's you, you reevaluate your position in formula 1 when you're when you're on the back foot and uh, and certainly after reevaluating sixth place would be seen as a success but if you'd have offered Lawrence Stroll sixth place at the start of the season I'm sure some rude words would have come out of his mouth and something probably thrown at you as well so um, allegedly so um, it's, whatever way you look at it it's not been a great season for Aston Martin but uh, one team that's it, it's I, I guess it is a good season for them given that they've raised up two places currently at the moment trying to hold on to eighth place from Alfa Tori and Haas but but really given that the season they they started with Louis is, is it is can this be seen as a success eighth place I think uh, Haas had a very flattering start to their season. I think it's the same with Alfa Romeo. We saw these, you know, the Ferrari powered cars and and were able to do really well and they capitalised early on those gains. But, you know, I think they were always going to be in a development race with the, you know, the other midfield teams and how quickly they would catch up. And Haas have not developed their car nearly as quickly as the, the other teams. And they even admitted that they went a lot of races without bringing any upgrades to that car and it's no wonder that they, their performances started to slip not to mention they've been unlucky with the fact that Mick hasn't been at his full potential this year and Kevin Magnussen's kind of had to do a lot of the heavy lifting at Haas take last weekend for example did did an amazing job before his uh his unfortunate DNF but um it's going to be close with Alfatari, but I think Haas's likelihood of points is probably going to be quite low. And I think they'll also take comfort in the fact that Alfatari's chances of points are going to be also really low because, well, we just really not had a good season this year. And, you know, eighth place may not sound the best, but given that they were lowest of the low, they're, you know, with scoring. I don't think they scored any points last year. I think they'll just be happy with this 37 points that they've managed to scrape this year. Yes, I think it's been very much, was it just the one upgrade package this year? And it's just been very much a uh, a start quick, see how many points we can score early doors and then try and hang on. And potentially they could have looked at a sixth place given how fast their car was at the start of the year if they'd have capitalised on all the opportunities. But uh, a few too many collisions from Magnussen and a, a few too many mistakes from, from Schumacher and they find themselves clinging on to eighth place but uh, but given the budget of that team and and everything they've been through and how the team was so close to was seemingly looked like it was close to either being sold or going under i think eighth place is is definitely a success overall for them but um alpha tori not really a success story at all uh, they've got one driver that doesn't seem to know what he's doing at times another driver who just has completely checked out um, it's it's a big season next year for for the Alpha Tori drivers and it's a it's a big race for them as well. That I, how important is it, Owen, for them to get that that eighth place to pull them away from the team you know the, the team that was worst apart from Williams? I mean, like, it should be easy, right? It's two points. It's two points from a team that's Red Bull funded. 
Um, but like you say, the they don't have access to the caliber of drivers that Red Bull have, um, and that's saying so. Like you know, and and and, and not by a small amount either. Um, I don't know. It, it's disappointing because Alpha Tori should be so much higher up the grid. Um, they, they, they sh- you know, and I, th- I think unfortunately the 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 kind of they are only two points off, but there are two points off a team that hasn't had any de- that has had what one upgrade and basically no development. It's you know, and AlphaTauri I think has actually done quite a lot of work on that car, and I think that speaks volumes about the about the driving standards that they've had to to put up with. Um, I don't think it's, it's just been it's just not been the kind of year that they would that you would expect. Um, I know it's just a de- meant to be a development team, or at least it used to be, but it's you know it, it's an ignominious position that they're in um and it and it is going to look bad because obviously we look down and the next team is is williams you know they are they are right at the bottom of the table um and they've been there for quite a while and they haven't moved you know there, there's been opportunities to change that but unfortunately they haven't um they could scrape the points that they need um to get to get away from uh, to get above Haas uh, and secure that eighth place but I, I, I don't see it. Um, I think this is a, this is a season to forget um, for for Alpha Tori. Um, you know, I, I, I don't. I think they've, they've this is this is one they yeah this is one they won't want to remember. Yeah, and, and just looking at the uh, the points so far this season, and Sonoda since uh, Spain has had five retirements and a tenth place. That's his uh, only contributions to the races. So that's that for me. I mean, Gasly wasn't much better, but he still only scored half the points of Gasly in a season where Gasly's checked out and got very close to a race ban. So it's uh, very, it's not good reading for Snowder at the moment, I don't think. And uh, and certainly if, if De Vries gets straight in on top of him next year, it's going to be good night sunshine for him next year. Um, I will just clarify that I, I was on the show yesterday. I was very confused about the situation at the restart. I know this is the Abu Dhabi preview, but I just feel I should probably clear this up apparently the reason Sonoda wasn't allowed to unlap is because the FIA didn't give him the the okay to overtake because when he came into the pits because of his position to the safety car he overtook the safety car whilst in the pits doing his pit stop and then emerged behind it again after making his stop now as a result of that that meant that the system triggered he'd already unlapped himself therefore wasn't allowed to unlap himself again which just seems like an absolutely crazy crazy situation and then as a result he ended up having to go a lap down from everyone else it's do they not just, have the do they not have a manual override or or, or... clearly not <laughs> clearly not and, and obviously no common sense as well because it, everyone could see where he was i mean anyone looking anyone who knows anything about formula one looking at that right yeah so we've got uh we've got the mercedes we've got uh the, we've got the ferraris the Bull, and snowder yeah that's right that's the correct order yeah no that's com- <laughs> bit of common sense here people come on <laughs> But uh, moving on to the bottom team, then we've got um, Williams is 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 the final team then, and um, and I uh, it's you I think it's you know, up next, Louis, isn't it? I can't remember. I've completely lost yeah. track of where I was because I was just waffling on about Sonoda. Uh, we'll pass on to you then for 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 Williams. Yeah, eight points. It's uh, Latifi's final race. He gets to go to his most glorious triumph one more time, and. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully this time he won't get quite as much hate as last time. And, and how good would it be for Latifi to sign out on Williams with a with a tenth place pass on the final lap of Mick Schumacher to redeem himself from last year? I think it would be amazing. Uh, it's um, it's definitely unlikely, mm-hmm. but um, you know, I think. I, like I said on the on the on the qualifying show, I think, and I think even the previews to Brazil, like he is just praying that maybe Logan Sargent doesn't get the super license requirements for next year, so that Williams might refer to him for another year. But it's you know, Latifi has been terrible all season. I don't expect him to be any better just because it's his last race. You know, he may shock us, he may surprise us, but that Williams isn't brilliant. And we've just seen how hard Alex Albon has had to push that car and the incredible, like, random strategies that they've had to do to even get that car in the points. Take Australia, for example. You know, how long did Albon have to go on a set of tyres just to even have a sniff at the points? 
Um, but <sighs> this is very little I say about Williams. It feels like talking about Haas from last year. It's like beating a dead horse uh, while it's rotting on the ground. It is. It's. It's Williams. Maybe they'll have a comeback next year. Probably unlikely, but uh, we'll just have to see how they get on. Well, there is some light at the end of the tunnel for Williams because they've got the more wind tunnel time than anybody else. They've got was it 115% of the seventh place team. They've got 40% more wind tunnel time, you know, and some change over Red Bull. And they're going to be operating at roughly the budget cap next year as well. Uh, I know Red Bull probably won't be, but uh, but they will at least be operating towards the budget cap. So that's that's uh, you'd think with the good people at Williams and with that in place. I know there's you can't unlearn everything that you've learned in the big team. So it's not just about just it's not all about money. It's about experience and and people and everything. But I I'd like to think that they do have a chance to to move forwards. But it's just will they move forward more than more than the teams around them in, in Haas and Alfa I, I can see Haas potentially falling backwards next year. I can see Alfa Tauri, they can't be as bad as they were this year. Aston Martin surely won't be as bad. So is it going to be Alfa Romeo plummeting down? Is it going to be McLaren plummeting down? It's uh, it's going to be an interesting season next year. And the second or even the third year of this kind of performance ballast that they've they've brought in and and it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see just just how this does affect it because i think now there's there's a lot of people turned off development very early in 2021 to focus on this rule set so you can kind of take this rule set with a pinch of salt really and 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 this first year but going into next year it's the first time they can learn from their mistakes and and this is where that success ballast really you know, will come into its own. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. And uh, and yeah, so we'll 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 look at when we're back onto this year. We still have one more race to get through. And I know it's not normally the most um, most amazing of circuits, Abu Dhabi, but uh, but those those changes that came in last year, we might see with these new cars as well. We might see this being a reasonable race. One thing's for sure. It's not going to be raining. So uh, with with those with that wonderful nugget I've just given you there, let's go on to our predictions then. So uh, now that you know that it's not going to rain, Owen, what's your predictions for pole, top three, and a bold prediction? And I actually mm-hmm. remembered it this week. Oh, pole. Uh, I got, you know, I, I see, normally I'd say Max Verstappen, but I said Max Verstappen was going to win bloody everything. Um, apologies for the language. I was going to win, <laughs> was going to win everything in Brazil, and he won nothing. Um, you know, not... <laughs> um, goodness me. Uh, I just want to point out as well that Nicholas Latifi has exactly the same number of points as Nick de Vries, um, and he's been in the car all year compared to uh, compared to one race, so... Uh, so yeah, um, no, I think it's probably oh for pole. I'm gonna go with no. The Red Bull's too fast. The Red Bull's too fast in a straight line. It'll it'll be Max Verstappen. He'll be on pole. Um, and then top three, Max Verstappen probably again. Um, he won't help Jacko. Uh, he says he will, but he won't. Um, <laughs> Probably, probably Charles Leclerc, and then Lewis Hamilton in third. Okay. I don't, know. I don't have a bold prediction for that. <laughs> well, I'll come back to you for the bold prediction. That's quite a lot to go for in one in one hit. So, Louis, what's your predictions for pole and top three? Uh, I'm going to go pole. Uh, pole. Sergio Perez win. Max Verstappen. Second, Charles Leclerc. Third, um, then I'll go Perez third because Max will like push him off in turn one or something. Just no, you don't. Then, um, bold prediction it will rain. <laughs> Well, I mean, it has rained once in Abu Dhabi. Apparently, it rained for about 10 seconds in a practice session, and then it stopped, and then it looked like it had never rained in about 10 years. So I do uh, remember, I can't remember if it was 2018 or 2019, uh, Abu Dhabi, and they went, so on the, uh, on the radio, went, it's 40% chance of rain in like the next like half an hour over the radio, yeah. like during the race. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it does happen. 
Yeah, I mean it does, but it's, I, at some point, I, I, yeah, at some point it must do. You, you oh. are right. So maybe I'm maybe I'm going to be completely um, shown up, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna lose this bet like a fellow grid talker lost a bet at the weekend, which we I'm sure we'll be talking about in the coming days. But uh, but yeah, okay. So any advance on your bold prediction, Owen? Before I go and uh, upset gonna... the apple cart. Uh, well, two things. I'm going to go with uh, my bold prediction is going to be that McLaren miraculously managed to get ahead of Renault, uh, Alpine Renault in the uh, in the championship. Uh, I don't know how they're going to do it. I think that's, I think it's uh, the, the the maths are stacked well against them, but I think they could potentially do it uh, if everything goes wrong and uh, and everything goes right for them. Um, also, tidbit of information. I remember watching the Dubai 24 Hours, and that was rained off once. Oh, was it really? Okay. Yeah, so... yeah. It's worth looking into. That the, the uh, I mean... it was it was at the Dubai Autodrome, and it looked like a lake. Yeah, no, it's not gonna. It's not gonna <laughs> rain. Get it? It's not gonna rain. It's in the Middle East. It's not gonna rain. <laughs> Well, like to I get really, you. I I really hope it rains now. We need Bernie sprinklers, right? So my my bold prediction is going to be tied into my poll and my top three because I'm I am fully in manifestation mode right now. I'm going to manifest it into existence. Pole position is going to be Lewis Hamilton. Top three will be Hamilton, Norris, and Ricardo. And my bold predictions is no points for Alpine. There we go. <laughs> It's going to happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to will it to happen. Um, okay, so um, that's the end of that. We've rattled through that in a in a hurry. It's almost like it's a uh, like it's a uh, the end of a very long season here. But we're going to do a post show because there's been a lot of questions you fired at us. So we'll uh, we'll get to them shortly. Uh, before we go, is there um, anything you want to plug, Owen and Louis? I'll start with you, Owen. Um. I think I'm still going to go with, uh, if you want to watch the downfall of Twitter, uh, sit back, relax. Um, and if you want to see me tweet about that, uh, you can get it at Owen Medford. And Louis? Uh, like and subscribe to the Agri Talk podcast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and uh, shortly after we've we finished the post show, I'll be going live with uh, the Monkey Seat podcast. I'm at Tom Horrocks F1 as well. You can uh, come along and see us there. Uh, so if you want to hear more from the Grid Talk podcast, we do have a huge back catalogue of shows and you can go back and listen to all of those. All of our race shows do go out live and uh, they go straight out on live on YouTube straight after the event. And the audio version is up shortly afterwards which is available on Amazon Fire, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Music, Verbal, Omni Studio, and Pocket Casts. And we also run a Patreon. If you want to help us to continue doing what we're doing, then please consider donating to us. Everything does go back into the show to uh, to improve your experience. And we'll be back this weekend for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix for the last time this year. So uh, the last time reviewing a race anyway. So we, we look forward to seeing you then. And we'll see you in the post show. Sorry, I, I was waiting to get the uh, get the. I was for some reason I was thinking we were going off the uh, live stream and we weren't going off the live stream. Were we? we were staying on the live stream. So, either way, that's fine. Sorted. Right. In order to prove a point about the rain, I've messaged my mate who's been living there for the last three months to so ask her, has it rained in the last three months? <laughs> I'm te- right, I'm telling you, go and look up pictures of the 2020, uh, tw- uh, of the 2020, 24 hours of Dubai because uh, it's held, okay, it's held in January. Um, but th- there are pictures of the pit straight just like covered in water. <laughs> Well, Absolutely I'm, soaked. It does happen on occasion. I'm willing to be uh, proved wrong on this one then. So uh, we've got quite a few questions in the uh, in in the channel there. So we'll have a quick look. Starting off with with Connor, um, ever reliable Connor. Thanks for coming back. Uh, who who do you think the final has seat is going to come down to? Well, I, I feel like Hulk's I feel being like, reported. I feel like Gunter Steiner kind of let something slip over the weekend because he said we want to have the decision lined up. Before Abu Dhabi, so that we can get the driver in the uh, in the in the postseason test. Well, it's Hulkenberg then, because why would they want to make sure Schumacher got in that test? That makes no sense, because it makes no difference. He's already been in the car, so whatever it means, it means Schumacher's being replaced, and that's going to be Hulkenberg because they need a German driver, and he's the only one. 
who's available. But we knew that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of one of it's one of those worst kept secrets in F one things again, isn't it? So, Connor, I think that's that's going to be uh, that's going to be Hulkenberg then. And Jared Bradley, yep, you heard Hulk a few hours ago. I'm, it will be announced this week. I'm sure it will know in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, no, it, um, it's not confirmed as far as I'm aware. Uh, did they address the Max drama in the race post show? If not, I'd love to get some opinions on it. Well, myself and Owen were on the uh, the, the post show, so um, Louis, your opinions on the Perez Max stuff? Uh, th- th- what language are we allowed to use in the post show? Uh, <laughs> de- don't demonetize, but not that we get any money from YouTube yet. But <laughs> okay, Max is a very very naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's uh, multi twenty one as as Owen was uh, was saying. Have you still got the sign? I, I, I've still got the sign. I don't, there we it go. It's multi seventy six. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I, I didn't work it out, but it's like multi. You no, know, because no, because right, because it was car two needed to go in front of car one, so it needs to. What's Perez's driver number? Eleven. It's 11. multi. It's multi one eleven. One multi one one one. <laughs> So wait, wait, but 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 if I remember my maths correctly, so this would be one and one, yeah. And then if you add those two together, that would be two. Yeah. Yeah. And if then you it's, did it so in Roman still, numerals. So it's still multi twenty one. <laughs> so it's, so it's multi one plus one one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do it in um, Roman numerals and then multi. Can, can you like, can you tell why I don't work for a Formula One team? <laughs> Also, my, my my mate just replied. He said no, not once to it raining. <laughs> there we go. Then there we go. Right. So I guess that kind of addresses that. Um, yeah. Go back and watch the watch the race show from yesterday, Connor. It was it was a good one. Uh, yeah. So George has managed to get to the chat at least anyway to say uh, sorry for not being on today. Bad boy. Bad boy, George. Um, Jared Bradley. Uh, uh, yeah. So they talked about it. Yes. It really does show. Yeah. So it's. Opinions about Max, basically, which is, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, and what else have we got from Jared again? Yeah, here's my big question. Max had a pit stop on lap 6, 21 and 48. Obviously, he needed to repair damage on lap 6, but why pit again on lap 21 to get rid of the mediums and then three stop? So the way I saw it, there, so he was, so he started on the, on the softs. Yes, he started on the softs. Then he went to the mediums when he made his pit stop. Uh, on lap six, lap twenty-one. So that was fifteen laps on that. I guess that was just that was just a short stint on the mediums, like uh, like Hamilton did. Was there was there a VSC at that point? I don't think there was. Was there? No, he didn't put under the VSC. And then lap forty-eight was the uh, was obviously the 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 third stop there. I think the same day with Carlos Sainz. Carlos Sainz tried to turn it into a two-stop, um, which he you know he potentially could have done. Um, Lewis could have potentially have one stopped, but uh, I think that was particularly unlikely. But uh, I think he was trying to turn it into a uh, into a two stop uh, or keep it as a two stop, and Verstappen probably would have liked to do the same. But it's uh, um, say with science, it was with the break with the uh, the tear off in the brake duct, and that kind of scuppered his race. Uh, Verstappen with the damage lost a lot of time. He knew he'd have to come in for another stop anyway um, with the five second penalty. So potentially, I'd say the reason they they may have stopped kept on the three stop was to uh, to because he had that five second penalty, give him faster tyres so he can make those five seconds up, and then not have it in the later stages of the race when he's not going to have a chance to make it back up again. I'd say that that's probably. My thoughts on that. What about you guys? I think that and the, uh, I mean, I agree with what you said 100%, but that and the uh, mediums were quite weak. The, mm-hmm. the obviously in the sprint race for them, I don't think they're what, like, you know, if, you go, if you're going to have to stop multiple times, you want your, like that happens, it's, it makes sense to actually put, put yourself on the weaker tyre uh, for the shortest possible time. Yeah, I, I, there's nothing I can really add to that. I think, yeah, I think you both hit the nail on the head. Yeah, and then Jared again, twenty four percent of McLaren's points for Danny Rick. That seems a bit high, to be honest. Yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> I did the maths. Yeah, yeah I, I trust. I trust your maths. You're um, you're what far better. Th- at... Thirty five over one four eight, and that gets you not point two three six. Yeah, and so you times that up. by hundred. Yeah, well, t- yeah, twenty four percent is yeah. Yeah, twenty. I call it twenty three. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you round up, didn't you? So. I, well, yeah, I, I, you you do because it's the it's the six, but yeah. it's the point six, but. I, I, does it matter? We're talking about 
percentages. 20, 23, 24, <laughs> but yeah, no, it is 24. So less cool. than a quarter of them. Yeah. Points. See, my, my, my old school maths would have just been um, divided by four and see what it comes out with. If it comes close to Ricardo's number, yep, that's 24%. So that's how I would have worked that out because I'm old. Uh, Jared Bradley is Avatari struggling because Red Bull have burnt through their young yep. stuff of drivers. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, potentially, yeah. They, they've not really had anyone come through for a while that's been decent. Liam Lawson's been hanging around for a little while. Um, Jan Jaruvula hasn't really made that next step up. Yuri Vips has, um, well, the less said about Yuri Vips, Canceled better. Into that seat. I think Vips <laughs> probably would have been in that Alfatori seat next year. Had uh, had he not been silly. had he kept his mouth shut, yeah. yeah, or or better yet, just don't be racist. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the days, I look, I I completely get they they need to be media trained to within an inch of their lives these days. And but he's a young man. He's he's made a silly comment showing off on a live stream, and it was absolutely deserves to be punished for that. But I don't want to see his career completely ended because of that. I'm glad he's still racing, but. Uh, yeah, I can see why he he can't be associated with the Red Bull brand. So, uh, you know, it's, I'd it's like been... to see how Ayumi Iwasa gets on next year to see whether he takes yeah. that Alpha Tower seat off maybe Sonoda. Yeah, he does look decent, doesn't he? I can't see Liam Lawson getting there, uh, but yeah, Iwasa has certainly been the the brightest spark in that. And given that he's Japanese, he's another Honda driver, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's certainly a a good shout there for. You know, Sonoda's going to be looking over his shoulder for that because the the one thing that's going to keep him in that seat is the Honda connection. And if there's another Honda driver, then I'm pretty sure he will be out on his ear. Uh, what else we got in here then? Um, ah, Tom Downey's in there. Hey, Tom. Oh, Tom. Uh, Sonoda on lapping was an absolute ab- absolute madness from the FIA. Amateur hour again. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it was. One thing um, I will say with that, the one is... Um... It, it does happen with because it is all run by software on that end, um, which apparently is all done by F one F one at big, uh, sorry F O M. Biggest issue with that is that will just it it will have been a, a scenario that no one thought of and no one's bug tested, yeah, or bug tested. I don't you know if you know what I mean. Like that's it's just something that the computer wouldn't have been wouldn't have been designed for because they couldn't plan around that. Is it me or has there been a lot of that kind of stuff this year? It seems like there's been a well, lot of this, system failures. And... It's like this VAR thing that they tried to introduce mm. for this year, and it's been enough. But, you know, it isn't the first time the, um, the FIA have only allowed some cars to unlap themselves. Well, there is that, but that was um, that was <laughs> at the behest of one man who is no longer in the organisation. It's so. the Michael Massey bug in the system. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's what happens, but you've got a complex system that's now even more complex. I mean, it's... It's you know every time you add more complexity to it, now they've got a code around that. So it's 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 the sorts of things, it's the sort of law of unintended consequences that no one must have thought of. Yeah. So Yuki Snow just driving along and he presses the button that says, "Can I lap myself?" And then a Monty Python <laughs> star head of Michael Massey pops up, going, "No, no, no, you're not allowed to unlap yourself." Um. So yeah. Uh. Tom, why so salty? Uh. Yeah. Fair enough. I should probably let it go about the whole Red Bull thing now. Uh, what else have we got in there? Um, yeah, we need to pass on to race race control to code masters if we're going to automate the system. Bring in oh, the definitely experts. don't do that. Well, yeah, if we do that, we'll end up having to pay to finish the race because it's no, no. Course, it's, now, isn't it? Anyone who's played F one twenty twenty two, you, you know, it's a buggy. Well, you, you I haven't have. yet. Have you? <laughs> I, oh, have you? I played it today. I was suck at it. I haven't played an F one game in about three years, and I it's absolutely. The traction is it. the traction will be a nightmare it, to get. It's prepared. okay. All of it's okay. All the tire barriers are gonna are out to get you. <laughs> I just seem like I mean I got used to Gran Turismo and having so much more time to uh, to kind of react to stuff, and then going straight into that. I just did it. I went straight into Australia, and I was like, "Whoa, what's this? You got no time to react." So yeah, I'm rubbish. I, I did a couple of uh, online races earlier, and uh, and I got thoroughly destroyed by a bunch of kids. So uh, yeah, <laughs> great. In the chat. Maybe maybe I shouldn't. Um, maybe I shouldn't. Uh... Oh yes, Carl is in the Carl is in the chat. Yes, I know I'm late, Carl. We'll finish this post show and then I'll be straight on with my seat. I promise. Uh, being glue sniffing again, Tom. Oh God, why with all the hate with me? Hi there, I'm Ed Winchester. I don't get that. 
not a clue. <laughs> I'm really confused. Okay, um, about Max's pit stop. Why not stay out on another 15, 10 to 15 laps on the mediums to complete the two stop? 15 laps on mediums seemed like a waste. Yeah, I think we covered that off before, saying about how the medium tyre just didn't seem to have the pace. Lewis seemed to have some decent pace on it, but he was the only one that was really making it work. Um, he definitely could have gone longer, and in hindsight, had he gone longer, he probably would have won the race because the safety car would have made sure of that. But uh, there we go. That didn't happen. So uh, Max is going to get his uh, skins kicked in Mexico next year. Yeah, potentially. Uh, bring back Brendan Hartley. Yes, yes, I like that. Just leave him uh, in sports cars. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I don't think Brendan Hartley's going to come back. It's, it's much nicer in sports cars. He's, he does a lot better there. <laughs> you can crash a lot more and get away with it usually because yeah. the, the cars are about 20, 20p. Yeah. Um, Jared, I promise we is McLaren fans don't just hate all Kiwis. That's that's nothing that's nothing personal. I just I've not seen anything from Liam Lawson that makes him look like a Formula One driver to me. Um I would be happy to be proven wrong. But uh, it'd be quite ironic if uh, if McLaren fans hated Kiwis. Yeah, the it would be very. Yeah. <laughs> that is true, that is true. Right. Uh now yeah. Now Carl's getting abusive towards me, so I better uh, <laughs> <laughs> I better shut this down now and, uh, and go and do go and do my other podcast that I've also not done any prep for. Wait, so. no, no, lead into it, lead into it. <laughs> right, should we just start the title sequence for Monkey Seat now? Come on, Carl, jump on. <laughs> well, I mean, you can do that, but like, no, send it over to, over to Monkey Seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come we, on, we'll do it. We'll do it. Do a raid, but you're still in the. <laughs> <laughs> you're still in the, the both streams yeah so if you want to hear those words that, that louis didn't say earlier uh we'll be saying them on the monkey seat so go uh at monkey seat pod uh search for us on youtube and come and join us over there uh it's there's gonna be it's gonna be a bit more relaxed than this one so thanks a lot for joining us lads and uh i'll see you guys next week Bye-bye. bye bye